Tush, I am the president of KCS this year, and it's an honor to welcome all of you to Summer Dreams 2019. If you remember in December, I talked to you that we have basically two focus areas this year. One of them was showcasing our culture, and second was enhancing the member experience. And part of the enhancing the member experience is that we were able to do this program as a, as a, a program which was free for our members. And this was, uh, this was possible with the support of our uh, sponsors. I would uh, call upon our sponsors uh, to come on stage so that you could see them and recognize them. So first, uh, we have uh, Alka Vora from uh, New York Life Insurance. This is her husband, Vijay Vora. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have George Joseph from Mass Mutual. Thank you. And in addition, we have three more sponsors. Uh, we have Godavari Restaurant. We have Rex Thomas from uh, Samson Properties. And we have Pete Taiwalapil from uh, Worldwide Travels. So thank you, sponsors, for making this possible. Uh, if, you see, if you see the program uh, this time, there is one kind of item which usually is not there. We have an intermission in there. And I just want to take you a little bit to the backstage uh, or, uh, you know, uh, the, the thought process around that. So when we were thinking about whether to have an intermission or not, there were two schools of thought. One school of thought said, you know, it's a Malayali program. Malayalis, you know, you give them a break, they won't come back to stage, there won't be enough people on, you know, in the auditorium kind of a thing. And there was this other school of thought which said, Mallus are the bestest people in the whole world wide. And they, will, they are here to support every program, and they will be here, so even after the, after the break, the first program, the auditorium will be full as if for the first. And we trust you for that. And we let the, the intermission, so. Thank you. So, wish you awesome. Other day, Allah. So, let's. Um, Today, amongst us, uh, we have Joshua, Joshua M. Thomas. Uh, he is a fellow Malayali, a great human being, a great person. I was honored to be with him for a couple of hours and I came back so impressed. Uh, so we are felicitating Joshua on his uh, election to the Prince George's County Board of Education, District 2. Uh, First, I would request uh, KCS uh, senior leader Raj Guru to be on stage to, facilitate, to felicitate uh, Joshua. So, let me read you a little bit about uh, a bio on Joshua. Honorable Joshua M. Thomas is a lifelong resident of Prince George's County in the state of Maryland. He is a proud lifelong member of the Kerala Cultural Society and also a member of Marthama Church in Greater Washington. He was elected in November 2018 to serve on the Prince George's County Board of Education, which serves the 22nd largest public school system in the United States of America. He is the first Indian American of Malayali origin elected to serve in public office in the state of Maryland. Great achievement, sir. He graduated from Eleanor Roosevelt High School in Greenbelt, Maryland, and graduated from Howard University in Washington, D.C. with a B.S. in Biology. After graduating from college, he joined Teach for America in Houston, Texas, where he taught middle school science in the Houston Independent School District. He then transitioned within Teach for America to manage the organization's recruitment efforts at historically black colleges and universities. With Joshua, please, uh, you'll stay. Thank you. And also here we have 
two of uh, jo two people who are very important in Joshua's life, Dr. T, Dr. T, who was a past president of KCS, and Mrs. Nancy Thomas, uh, who has uh, been the vice president of KCS. We are honored, sir and ma'am, if you could please be on stage. Request the executive officers. Thank you. I would request uh, Mr. Raj to, uh, it's more of a personal touch, right? Joshua Thomas. I know him since he's probably six or seven years old. And his family for so long, for about 20 years. He's a son of KCS family because his dad, Dr. Matthew Thomas, who is famously and currently known as Dr. Chi among us, he served as KCS president in 1997. And his mom, Mrs. Nancy Thomas, has been with us for about two years as VP, vice president of KCS. And served in the executive committee afterwards. So when you look at the whole ground, he is actually a son of KCS family, as well as a son of this soil. We should be so proud of him, because he is such a dedicated, committed person who went for the election and suddenly won a seat out of four, correct? And he's going to say more about that. It is an honor for me to recognize him on your behalf on this stage at this time. Thank you. <laughs> this is the plaque. It says, Award of Recognition presented to Joshua M. Thomas for your outstanding achievement in being elected by voters to a four-year term to Prince George's County Public Schools, Board of Education, District 2. You are an inspiration to the KCS family, 18th May 2019. cheat sheet of notes, um, but since I don't, I will try my best to speak off the top without referring to my notes, but I'll keep it here just in case. Uh, but I want to thank you uh, you all for being here this evening, and uh, especially want to thank uh, the Kerala Culture Society uh, for taking the time to recognize me uh, and my family. It truly means a lot. Uh, Raj Gurupangal and uh, Mr. Santosh George already um, referenced a few of the things that I was already going to say, um, but let me tell you that as long as I've been alive, KCS has been a part of my life. Um, I watched my dad hold virtually every role in this organization, from president uh, all the way to Maveli and Onam. <laughs> he went, maybe this year, you never know, you see him. I've also seen my mom serve as the KCS vice president. I've watched my sister. Um, sing at probably every single program throughout the year for at least 15 to 20 years. So let me tell you that I spent a lot of time with KCS and know that during all of those moments, uh, for any of you young guys back here, I was running around with my friends sitting in the back of the room, uh, even with Raj Gurbangal's son. So, <laughs> um, but I want to just also add, um, the reality is that this week was a tough week for me. Uh, I came down with an illness on Tuesday, and it wasn't just a regular cold. It was bad enough that I had to call out of work on Wednesday, and then on Thursday, 
and even on Friday, but I knew I couldn't let the KCS down. I had to be here tonight, so I, I made sure that I got my good rest because I, I, owed, I owed one to uh, Mr. George. So I, I wanted to just share some very brief remarks, um, and, and my message here is simple. You know, as Indian Americans, we are one of the fastest growing ethnic groups in this country, but we are still the least represented in public office. And we can all agree that our voices and our perspectives matter on all issues. Uh, you know, there's a saying in, in the world of politics and in any industry, which is that if you're not uh, making the decisions at the table, you might be on the menu. And we, though that kind of funny, but also a little bit awkward sounding, it's true. No one is going to advocate for us and our interests better than ourselves. And so um, while I'm excited to be the first Malayali Amer American representing uh, our community in Maryland, this is just the beginning and we have a long way to go. I also want to talk a little bit about how I got here. I know I don't, I don't uh, like to listen to a long speech, so I'm going to keep it uh, pretty quick. Uh, but for my young folks, I see a few people that look like you're in high school, maybe you're college bound, or even if you're not there yet, I just want to let you know that I was a biology major, just like maybe many of you would be. And it's something that my dad is still not really happy about to this day, uh, because as you can see, I did not become a doctor. Um, but the important thing to, to note, and the thing that I tell a lot of college students as well, is that it's, it's more important to just continue to keep your feet moving. Uh, you know, we are in a time where the workforce has evolved incredibly, where uh, it's now a lot more common for people to take time after college to get some meaningful work experience for a few years before going to graduate school. So students, young folks, Keep an open mind about what you might want to do. And parents, I know, I'm not, a, I'm not a parent, I don't have kids of my own, but be, you also should keep an open mind and encourage your kids to pursue different career paths. Because from my story, my original plan was after college to go to medical school. Well, after college, I ended up joining a program called Teach for America. And Teach for America focuses on improving the quality of education for students in low-income communities across the country. It's a two-year teaching commitment. My plan then became, okay, I'm gonna teach for two years, and then I'll go to medical school. Well, as you can see, that's not what happened. But what did happen was that during my time in the classroom, I not only got to have an immediate impact on my students, but I built a, a, a sense of purpose and conviction that was grounded in the challenges and the realities of the communities that I was working with. I started to really understand what educational inequity meant and looked like, and started to develop some mindsets around how I could use my career to drive forward change. And so at the end of my second year, I ended up joining the staff of Teach for America, working in recruitment. But what happened was the more and more I kept recruiting students, to join our program, I kind of started to recruit myself. I started to realize that I was very passionate about the issues that I was talking about. And my own home county, Prince George's County, could do a lot better. After all, we are the 22nd largest school district in the country, uh, but we are the second lowest performing in the state of Maryland. And so it was all of those moments, all of those risks that I took, where I wasn't following that original plan, and I wasn't exactly sure how it would play out. And please know, I've still got a long way to go. Uh, the only thing that I know is that my term goes until 2022. Maybe in, maybe in a couple years I'll decide the next position that I want to run for. But what I do know is now that I'm extremely passionate about fighting for equitable education for all kids. And uh, my, my challenge to the young folks here is to keep an open mind and to keep your feet moving and you will continue to learn what you like, what you don't like, and that passion will drive you forward. I'd like to just conclude my remarks uh, with just thanking a few people. Um, first, I'd like to thank the entire Kerala Cultural Society of Metropolitan Washington 
uh, particularly the entire executive board, and of course the president, Mr. Santos George. Uh, I would also like to thank uh, my entire church community, the Martoma Church of Greater Washington, and uh, especially our vicar, Reverend Anu Uman. And uh, lastly, I would like to thank my family, specifically my sisters, Alicia Thomas and Varsha Thomas, as well as my parents, Dr. Matthew T. Thomas and Miss Nancy Thomas. And I just want to also add that I could not have made it to this point without such strong support from this community. And for that, I am forever grateful. And so I humbly accept the award uh, from the Carroll Cultural Society, and I will continue to represent our community well on the Prince George's County Board of Education. Thank you very, very much.